walk too far. Keep pushing, because God is on our side. Come on, let's worship here today. Amen. Because one could have went out, maybe two, this morning. But they're still here on this side of the river. Let's give God some praise.
remember back in the 80s, we were sitting in my house and talking about gospel music and how we wanted to be an inspiration. God has blessed us and brought us from a long way. And I just want you to know, Paul, that the only way that a man can get you down, he's got to be down with you. And I just want to encourage you today and everybody that's listening, that no matter what face you, he's there.
and we have stopped praying. Jesus went a stone's throw distance away from his disciples. And the Bible said he began to pray earnestly. And for a few moments he returned to his disciples and he noticed that they were fast asleep. And he asked them a question, could you not watch one hour? In other words, could you not continue in prayer one hour? The devil is busy. And we need to be on our jobs. Soon, here comes Judas. Along with the crowd that he had betrayed Jesus with. And he walks up to Jesus and Jesus knowing their purpose. Say, have you come to betray me with a kiss? His disciples turns around and said, Lord, shall we use our swords? And Jesus said, if my kingdom was of this world, then would my servants fight? And the Bible said he bent down and picked the centurion's ear off because Peter had smote his ear and put it back on his head and said, if my kingdom was of this world, then would my servants fight? Saints, we have been equipped to do battle. The weapons of our warfare are not torn, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and bringing into captivity everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What happened here this morning is an attack of the adversary because he doesn't want us to get where we need to be. As soldiers in a spiritual army. I don't know why it is that we think that everything supposed to be good. Supposed to be fine and dandy. I don't know why it is church folk, Christians don't see themselves going through but because Jesus said for my name's sake you shall have trials and joy. Saints, it ain't going to get no better. You might as well brace yourself for the battle. It ain't about a picnic. We can't spread a table and enjoy ourselves. It's fighting time. The song said, this means war. Because Satan is not playing with us. All you got to do is look around at what he's doing in the earth. Look around with what he's doing with the church. Church doors are shut up because of COVID. <coughs> Hatred. Amen. And bigotry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Riding and craziness is going on yes. this day and time. <coughs> I said it the other day, the evil before they even thought about it, when they started on the Capitol, I said, after this, the capital of the will will be fixed in where we can't get to it no more. Because of the craziness of people. Satan knows that he has but a short time. So we as God's children need to be watching and praying. We need to quit looking out for hands out and candy. Yeah. We shouldn't stop following everything that we think going to get 
get us blessed. And stop putting on the whole arm of God. God didn't call us in this army to have a good time. He called us to do spiritual battle. He didn't call us in, in, in this army to call out blessings all the time. He called us in this army to do spirit. We got a fight on our head. So we need to quit taking scripture out of context. And applying it to our wants as well as our needs. I was studying Psalms 1. Am I going to be alone? And Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. When we hear the word blessed, we think about money, we think about things. We think about our desires and our wants. We think about getting, but it says, blessed is a man. This is a beatitude. And a beatitude is defined as permanent blessings or permanent happiness. In other words, blessed or permanently is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, that man is permanently happy. The Beatitudes had nothing to do with us getting stuff. It's saying that we are permanently happy if we walk not Glory to God. in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the congregation of the unrighteous. But it goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of God. And in them he do meditate. Let me show you where we're missing it. We read that, but we don't apply it. We are permanently happy, Brother Smith, if I don't walk with ungodly people. If I don't stand or, or make sinners my company keepers. Nor sit or hang out where sinner folk hang out. Oh, this might be hitting some church folk here. But it goes on and says, my delight, what satisfies me is not my friends. What satisfies me is not who I run with, who I hang out with. What satisfies me is my delight, my love for the law of God. No, I am talking up in here. And it goes on and says, if I delight myself in this law, I'll meditate. How many of you ain't picked the Bible up this week? I'll meditate in his laws day and night. Glory to God. And night. I become addicted to it. And it goes on to say, he shall be like a tree. Glory to God. Planted by the rivers of water. Let me give you the significance of that position where that tree is planted. It says, by the rivers. Water represents life. Of yeah. yeah. water, in other words, the flow of water makes that tree vibrant. Yeah. Glory to God. When you plant it in Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. you become vibrant. Who's the leaves? Glory to God. Somebody said, well, can't compare me with no tree. Guess what? Most trees will be 
be here your entire lifetime and long after you gone become yes. of what their roots do. Yes. Their roots where, where, that, where, where, where they are grounded in search for water and it doesn't cease till it finds. So the leaf shall not wither. You want to see a Christian ain't planted in God, they dry it up. They get cold in God. Because of where they're planted. The leaf shall not wither. But whatsoever they do, now I want you to pay close attention to that last passage. Whatsoever they do. Mm -mm. I didn't say whatsoever God chooses to do. Whatsoever you do. Because of where you are planted. Well, y'all hear me? You can't be planted part in the church and part out of it and expect your leaves to stay green. You can't hang out at church sometimes or when you feel like they expect what you do shall prosper. You got to be firmly planted in God. Because guess what? God just don't bless because He got it to give. Some of us like children with parents that's pretty much guided on the hill. We look at them as though they ought to give us because they got it to give. God doesn't bless me because he got it to give. My blessings is contingent upon the fact that I'm doing what God won't be to do. I'm being where God wants me to be. And the Bible says, whatsoever they do shall prosper. Whatever they do. Whatever they do it, God said, do you know anybody that in your mind that they, they always prosper? And sometimes you get a little jealous, start playing hurt, hating, because in your mind, they, they all, sister, they always got But what you need to do is not look at what they got or what they're getting and see where they planted. Some of us are planted in the desert where there is no water. And we need to uproot and put ourselves by the river of living water. Oh God, hallelujah. I don't want nothing from God. I already got it. True glory to God. I ain't asking God for nothing. Oh, it's already mine. Blessing and blessed is two different words. Blessings are conditional. And they come frequently. But blessed is a continual process. When I say I am blessed, that means in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in the house. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. That means my blessing is Pauper, I have more than him. 
will take. I might not have $20 in my wallet, but I'm richer than Trump could ever think about me. Why? Because his riches can come to an end today. Enrichment, I don't think we're TVA. I think of Bible said, lay down your treasures on earth for rust and dust, the corrupt and thieves break in and steal, but lay your treasure up in heaven. For where your treasures are, there shall your heart be also. I ain't looking for no places. I'm about to. Come to church, see what I can get out of God. I already got it. I'm a blessed when I woke up this morning. Blood running warm in my veins. Getting married 
married to somebody that don't truly love you, you'll find out very soon that that part-time happiness wasn't worth the effort. You'll be saying, I wish I had never married that fool. Part-time. I don't want no part-time happiness. I want part all the time. Nothing, brother, spend to do with what's going to go in my wallet. Hmm. Everybody around you saying you kind of grinning. What's wrong with you? You're a planet. Who glory to God? You're a planet. That's what's wrong. When somebody asks you, how come you ain't crying? Just tell them I'm playing. And I shall not be moved. I'm planning. Yes. Glory to God. All right. I know what it feels like to be unhappy and pretend to be happy. When I first started dating my wife, I was unhappy, but I was pretending to be happy. And I'd go to church with them from time to time. And I'm sitting up in there. Why are these folks so happy? I know they got some misery in their life. Some upsets in their life. Some disappointment. Why are they so happy? And it had nothing to do with what was going on in their lives or with their life, But everything to do with who was in their life. When you put Jesus in your life, yes. you go there. All right. He'll make you experience sunshine when it's storming outside. Yes. When it's cold, he'll make you feel warm. Yes. Oh. Glory to God. Yeah. Am I talking up there? Yeah. Let me go back to bless yeah. and bless him. If you give me a blessing, I'm going to be happy for the moment. I don't care how big or how small that blessing is. For the moment, I'm going to be happy. But once that blessing is gone, I'm going to return or resort back to my sand. Till the next blessing shows up. Oh, 
Christ has already done for me. COVID couldn't even take me out, but that ain't going to nullify Amen. what God has already done for me. Oh, we got five minutes. Preacher Grown just said. But saints, you're in a marathon with your soul. And you can't get focused on coming in first. You got to get focused on coming in. Spectrum. 
natural, having and have not, to be content. In other words, be satisfied and wait on God. Some of us got wives we don't want. Husbands we don't want. Jobs we don't want because we didn't wait on God. We weren't content with being who we was to God move. Don't you move. Amen. Don't you move. Wait on God. And when God moves, He'll tell you when to move. And your mood will be right. Blessed is the man who walks not. Don't listen to what worldly folks are trying to tell you. Cancel. That's being, being advised. That's being advised by somebody that don't know God. And you claim to love him, but you're doing what somebody that don't love him says to you. What can a worldly person tell me that's going to benefit me? Huh. Not one thing. Some of us got Christian husbands and got a worldly friend telling you, Honey, I wouldn't put up with that. <laughs> and the Bible said, if, 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 if you don't have to do it, if they, if you don't have to, sadly, you don't have to dwell with it. Why is the cancer? Because you're living for God might save you. Said, I have a worldly friend, but hey, guess what? I ain't walked with my worldly friends for over 40 some years. They're still my friend, bro. I'll do some anything for them. They probably do anything for me, but they ain't, they ain't who I want to hang out with. They ain't who I want to associate myself with. I want to associate myself with godly people. My company has to be godly for them. They ain't godly people. I just ain't going to be with them. No, I'm sick. I'm going to say that. I won't sit. No, sit in the congregation of the ungodly. Brother, the Bible teaches me and you to not even eat with a brother or sister that claim to have a relationship with God. So don't even meet with. Don't break bread. And breaking bread done in Jesus' time was done in a sitting position. So don't sit with them folk. I ain't going, got no business hanging out and rise with my worldly friend. Smile. <laughs> You see how much word we don't apply to our lives? Yeah. And at the same time, can't figure out how come we don't walk in the blessings of God. Because the pendulum is swinging in this direction. And if you're over here, the blessing pendulum is swinging in this direction. And if you're over there, it can never get to you because it's in this direction. The only way you're going to get the blessings of God is get in the swing of the pen. Get into the, the flow and the direction where the blessings of God is swinging. you got to line up. I ain't going to never from Tommy if I know or have an inkling you ain't living for God. I ain't going to never come and tell you God going to bless you. Because I'll be lying on God. He can't bless you. He doesn't bless me. Amen. So if you ain't living nothing, and a man or woman of God prophesied that God's going to bless you, you better tell yourself he's lying because ain't going to happen. <laughs> ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. And I ain't, I ain't backing it up with what I think. 
I'm backing it up with what the Word says. Give. This is one of the, one of the areas most Christians fail in. It's tithing. I was asked on my job by a Christian that he loved the Lord. He said, preacher said, uh, you know, uh, I tithe, my wife tithe, and, and everything we've always tithed. He said, but I know it was required in the Old Testament. He said, is it required now? Don't, don't answer that because you might be wrong. Be, be slow about answering what I just His question. He said, Pastor, do you think it's, it's, it's required of us now? The answer is no. I said, because you love God and you love the work of God, you should want to tithe. But the Word of God teaches us to give as we have been prospered. Amen. Doesn't say nothing about tip in the New Testament. In the New Testament, is it is it wrong not to tithe? I said you shouldn't not want to. Because I still think the principles of Malachi still works. If I don't tithe, I'm, I'm cursed. But God does not demand or command that I tithe. He said, "Blessed is a cheerful." And y'all go check the scripture if you disagree. Check the scripture and come back and tell me who's wrong. A lot of people disagree with you and never study a subject that they're disagreeing with you on. He loves a cheerful kid. <clears throat> you got nothing to do with my tent. I've been tired ever since I've been at this church. But it ain't got nothing to do with my tent. Got a lot to do with my obedience. And if I love God, I ain't gonna sister Judy, I ain't gonna hold back. Every time God bless me, I'm gonna see if I can find a tent to give him. Not because he requires it, because I desire to do it. I want to, and I'm going to. And guess what? Because you do it, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have. I'm, I'm just glad, one second, I'm just glad I caught on to it. Malachi, I'm glad I caught on to that. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Good measure. Yeah. Press down. Shake. Yeah. Think about that. Press down. In other words, you already already talk against what? When you give, God pushes it. He makes room to give you more. Yeah. And he shakes it together so it'll fill up all of the empty spots and, and drop some more. So he put some more in it. Yeah. And then he goes on and says, run it on. Yeah. Saints, I, 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 Brother Joe, I believe that in my giving and my tithing is, is probably exceeded somebody's salary in here. That's right. In a year's time. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? It brings me back to the widow woman who only had enough cake yes. to give her and her son, and then they was going to die. And the man of God said, Make me one first. And when she made him one first, she was obedient to the word of God from the man of God. Because see, God told him to go down there. Yeah. Yeah. So what he had to say to her was not from himself, but from God. God was speaking through the prophet, telling her, bake me a cake for yeah. Somebody better start cooking with gas. Yeah. <laughs> 
She done what the man says, and guess what? The Bible said every time she went to her meal bar. Everybody else was starving to death, but because she came. Some of y'all, y'all accuse me of bragging on self, but I'll, I'll brag on God. I try to get you to see what God is doing and has done in my life. No weapon form shall prosper. Many of y'all, many of y'all been worried because of my work is filled yeah, ain't sure. I, I ain't bothered by with, with, with one concern of worry. What's wrong with worry? What's wrong? I run into people. You lose it. I'm not looking at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. Because the things that I see are even they're temporary. But what I cannot see are not one moment have, sister, have, have I felt sick. Even toward, man, you, you how? 71. I wish I had your image. There ain't many 35-year-old men can outwork me. I'll be 72 this year. There ain't many 35-year-old young men can out, they won't hang with you. They won't do it, bro. Where you getting that energy? Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole arm of God. I'll work most 35-year-old men under the table. It was seven that morning. Do it every day. Every day. I'm bragging on God, not me. Every day. I don't go home hollering, I'm going out. I need a breath. I need to lay down. I'm tired. That don't happen with me. Don't happen, Brother Tommy. It don't happen. Somebody said, man, when you going to slow down? The only time you're going to see me slow is when that casket is lowering me in the vault. And that thing going to rip. I'm like, hell! Get off your seat. Uh -huh, I'm that big tree. Uh -huh. yeah. Get me that
sugar diabetes. Ooh, glory. Blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Are you blessed? Yes. We're blessed. Yes. When you're blessed, you don't need nothing. And you don't want for nothing. What was the word you gave me a few weeks ago in the pastor's study? You said something to me about my faithfulness to them. My longevity and my faithfulness as a pastor. You spoke, you spoke something in my spirit that God's going to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Jerome spoke this in my spirit. The pastor. You get the word from them. God is satisfied with you. You've been faithful. 34 years, you've been faithful. Not that I've done nothing, but God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But God. He said, God's going to lie. You just enjoy it. Yes, yes. And I'm blessed now yeah, yeah. than I ever be. Amen. I'm permanently happy. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. 